Hi, it's Elizabeth Sweetwater here and welcome to another YouTube video tutorial. In this video I will be making the uh, retro style jersey shirt. I will explain in this video how to construct the collar and the facing and I will give you a handy tip on buttonholes. To see the complete step-by-step -step tutorial you can go to our uh, Weebly site at address below. Enjoy this video! So I've cut out all my pieces and we're going to start with the front. The darts are all sewn and I have overlocked the shoulder seams. So here we have the darts, overlocked the shoulder seams and I've overlocked the edge of the facings. As you can see the right piece includes a facing and on the left side you have to sew the facing on the piece to create a placket. I will pin the placket to the left side and then sew it and press it. Don't look at this seam by the way, I didn't have enough fabric so I had to uh, sew some bits together. I'm gonna uh, sew this seam here and then I will press open this and then we're gonna fold it back like so and then we have created a placket so the facing is now sewn with a stretch stitch I ironed open the seam first and then I pressed it towards the facing Next thing is uh, pinning the shoulder seams. I have pinned the front shoulders to the back facing, the back yoke facing, and I have pinned the facing to the back yoke facing. And now I will sew them with a stretch stitch and press them open. So the shoulder seams are done, now all you have to do is fold the facing back like so there we go and we have a placket so next is the collar what I always do with the collar is um, I copy my pattern piece that has uh, the seam on it and then I take my pattern piece with the seam and I cut off my seam allowance and I will use this as a template I will put it on my collar piece and I will draw the shape on the interfacing of the collar and then I have my second piece this interfacing is stretch fusible interfacing and the other side of the collar I've only ironed two small bits of non-stretch interfacing because this is where the button and buttonhole are going to be and you don't want them to stretch. So you then put right sides together, you pin it all around and then you can easily sew on the line you just drew. So that's what I'm going to do next. The collar is now sewn and I have cut the seam short here on the stand area and here on the point of the collar and also cut away a little here and make sure you cut it all the way to the stitching before you can turn it you want to open iron open the seams and this is easiest with a sleeve board so you can just put it on a sleeve board like this and then it's easier to press open the seams now these points are going to be quite hard to press open Sometimes I just put my finger in it and then quickly iron it like this, which is not advisable if you don't want to burn your fingers. So after pressing we're going to uh, turn it inside out and we're not going to top stitch yet, but I will put a buttonhole in it already because it's easier to reach. So my collar is ready and pressed and I've made a buttonhole in it. I have indicated where the facing folds back with a pin on the left side and on the right side and you're going to start pinning the collar from this point 
one pin goes in here, then you have marked the shoulder point, which is here, and that goes onto the shoulder here. And then you pin the whole collar around until you get to this point and you sew it on with a regular stitch. So now we have uh, sewn the collar to the front. I will now pin the facing to the collar. So first you want to pin the shoulders again. And make sure you pin on the side of the visible stitching. And then you continue pinning all the way to the left side and then you sew the neck with a stretch stitch on top of the visible stitch. So the collar is now sewn in. It's in between two layers. The next step is to connect the back to the back yoke. So I've indicated the middle point with the pin and also the middle point of the back yoke. And then right sides together, you can pin them. And just like we did with the collar, um, you first sew it with a regular stitch. So the uh, back yoke is now sewn on and now we have to attach the back yoke facing to the back. I have indicated the middle of the facing with a pin and I've also indicated the middle of the back piece also with a pin. What you do now is you fold it in, you take the seam, place the middle on top and then you pinch it with your fingers. So you have all three layers between your fingers and then you turn it inside out and you will pin the seam starting from the middle on the side where you have visible stitching. So one in the middle and one in the end. So you're going to start sewing from the middle all the way to the end with a stretch stitch. So we've now sewn one half of the seam and now we're going to pin the other half. Doing the same thing. All three layers and then you pin on the side where you can see the visible stitching. And then you pin all the way to the point where you've started to sew before. So fast forward a few steps. In the meantime, I have attached the sleeves, the cuffs to the sleeves. I have sewn the side seams. I have overlocked the bottom of the whole shirt. Now I'm going to sew the bottom corner of the uh, facing. What you do is you fold it towards the front and then go two and a half, two and a half from the bottom and you sew it. Then you don't need to cut it short, you can just leave it and then fold it back like so. Okay. And then you have a neat corner. After having done that, I can uh, pin my hem and sew the hem just with a regular stitch. Once I've done the hem, I will then top stitch the whole shirt. I'm going to start from the bottom. I go about half a centimeter from the edge, I go up, then I go around the stand, go up the collar, go all around the collar, and then go down again. And then we also need to top stitch the button placket. So you need to top stitch it half a centimeter from this edge. That's just a single stitch. And then after that, all we need to do is the buttonholes. So all that's left to do now is the buttonholes. For buttonholes, I like to use water soluble foil like Avalon because it gives a more three dimensional buttonhole. I've cut out a strip of Avalon here. So what I do is I, I mark out the distances between the buttonholes and then I pin 
the strip on my button stand and then I just sew over the foil and then once the buttonholes are sewn then you can just tear it off and if there's any residue you can just rinse it off and once I've done my buttonholes I can open them up and of course sew the buttons on and then we're done so the buttons are sewn on and the shirt is ready to wear I hope you have enjoyed this video and are inspired to make one yourself if you have any comments or questions just let me know and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.